Anna, komm Anna, Anna, Anna. My name is Graham Bromley. I live in 800 Baden Street. Professionally, I have been a software developer for the last 43 years. I have been managing the community cats here since uh, around uh, 2010, late 2010. I was living here about one year before I started to take an interest in the community cats and um, devise a program to manage them effectively. There are feral cats, which are domestic species, in other words, a cat, but they are, other than that, effectively a wild animal. There are stray cats, which are not owned by a human being, and they tend to uh, be found in large numbers in urban areas. Community cats, we call them community cats when they are stray cats, which are managed by volunteers that look after them in, in various ways. Um, and then, of course, there are owned cats, which are living live with a human being that owns them. Uh, I feed these cats um, every single day. I know for a fact that they have not missed a day's feeding now in many years. I feed them literally every day without fail. And I do have uh, assistants that help. I have, uh, I'm not here on the weekend, us usually, and I have assistants who feed them Saturday and Sunday. I feed a total of eight. There's five cats here in the park. There is one on the other side of the creek, Penitentia Creek, um, just a little bit south of the post office over there. There are some big pine trees on the bank. I feed him, her actually, female, I feed her there. Um, and there, the other two of the eight are north of the post office um, by the kinder care. So altogether eight, in, in eight in three locations. We were recognized in four years ago, in 2019, by the uh, California District Assembly. I was invited by the California District Assembly to attend the award, and they gave me a nice, uh, like, a, like a metal type of um, artifact, and also a, a frameable uh, poster, uh, recognizing your work doing, I forget the exact wording, but it mentioned the TNR um, program that you manage and the benefit that that's been to the community. The reason I got into this in the first place was because the number of cats was in rapidly and continuously increasing. When I first moved in, it was a few, two or three, I don't know exactly, but it, uh, just a few. Um, within a year, it was up to maybe 10, and the number was rapidly increasing. At the peak, it was probably around 15, 15 to 20. Well, the number has gone down due to management. It was going up without management. Cats, cats reproduce at a fantastic rate. A single female cat has two to three litters a year. It's not like human beings at all. One female cat has two to three litters a year. Each litter is four to six cats. 
So in a single year, one female cat can have as many as 18 kittens, year after year. By the time it passes away, it will typically leave behind maybe about 3,000 that it has sight that it's given birth to in the meantime. Now, many of those kittens die. They don't all survive, obviously, um, but quite a few of them do. And this is why the population will rapidly expand. In fact, it will explode, as it was doing here at Luna back in 2009, 2010, because at the time nobody was doing anything to manage this problem. The method that's used to manage stray cat populations, and this is used um, universally in developed countries today, is called TNR. That means trap, neuter, return. So the idea here is that you catch the cat, you have to trap it somehow, take it to a vet, you have it sterilized, spayed or neutered, male or female, I mean, in f female or male, so that that cat cannot produce any more. And then you put it back exactly where you found it. Now, because cats are very territorial, they want to stay in their space that they are currently living in. The space you now have, for example, this park, is now occupied by cats that can't make any more. And because they are territorial, they don't like other ones coming in. So now the population stabilizes. And then over time, as they die from various causes, it will gradually decrease down to some lower level. And that's, that's the situation that's been going on now since around 2010. <laughs> Come on. Sasha, who is that? Oh, who's this? Who's that? Hmm? Yeah. She's very sociable, very sociable cat. I found her in the park between building 700 and 800. I think she was, I'm certain she was abandoned because she was very social. But she'd clearly been around people a lot, so somebody abandoned her, I think. I put notices up all around the area, but nobody replied. That's my ancient Rome book collection. I'm an ancient Rome, amateur ancient Rome historian. I got all of these things from Italy, different places in Italy. Except this one. I got this at the Roman Museum in England when I went, went to visit my brother recently. Wine? Oh yeah, I you do drink some. Yeah, sure. It's not chilled, I'm afraid. No, it's all right. Red or white? Red. That doesn't need to be chilled. This is a good one. I like this one. It's from sure. Portugal. It's one of my favourite red wines, actually. It's a blend, but it's um, I really like it. It's very drinkable. You talked about uh, the uh, the money that you've been spending on the cats you could have bought a nice car yeah probably oh well actually definitely to can you honest. talk a little bit more about that um well it's expensive because anybody that's owned a pet knows that you in a typical year you're likely to spend probably several thousand dollars um vet bills are extra extraordinarily expensive in this area uh I've taken cats into the vet, $2,000, $1,500, $1,200, $500. Um, you take a cat in, oh, I need to do a blood test. Oh, we need to do a urine test. Do they really? I don't know, but they do. Um, and it's expensive. It's very expensive. Um, you can get pet insurance, but if you do the math on that, it's kind of a scam in my opinion, because the cost of the insurance is at least as big as what you would pay on the vet bills. So what's the point really? 
Um, there's the food. The food alone is several hundred dollars a month. It's actually a lot less now than it was because there are so fewer cats now than there were. Um, but at one point it was three or four hundred dollars a month just for the cat food. So 12 months of that, you're looking at, you know, three, four thousand dollars a year, 10, 12 years to do the arithmetic. It's, it's a big number. Um, the vet bills, the, the trapping, um, all the uh, flea treatments, um, they all get treated for fleas. The outdoor cats are all treated for fleas once a month. And the treatment, uh, I'll show you the treatments. The treatments um, are about $10 per cat per month. So they have two kinds. One is this little pipette that you put on the back of the neck. You have to part the skin, the, the fur, and so you can see the skin. And then you puncture this and squirt it on the back of the neck. Um, so those are about $10 each, one cat, one month. And this is a tablet, it's called Credelio. And I grind this up with mortar and pestle and mix it in the moist food. And this one is not quite as good as this, but it's almost as good. This one kills fleas, ticks, and ear mites. This one kills fleas and ticks, but not ear mites. But other than that, they're basically the same. Most cats, I can't do this anymore. Most of the cats we still have, I can't put, they won't let me do it. So I have to use this one. But they get that every month. So that's, uh, you know, $10 times the number of cats per month times 12 months. That's up. It's, uh, it's expensive. I do tell people that I care for these cats almost as if they were my own children. I feed them every day, Monday to Friday, for the last 12 years, um, occasionally on the weekends as well. There are other issues, what to do when they're sick. In that case, I have to trap them which can be very difficult because having been trapped once, they don't want to be trapped again. So that's a real handful. The cats at the moment come, will wait for me here at four o'clock. I come out at four. I call them by name. They each have a name and they will come out from their book under the bush or whatever and be fed.
since 2010. Um, we've lost 14 altogether at the latest count, about two thirds of those on the roads. They do occasionally wander into the roads. If they do, if they start to do that, their lifespan is short. Abel Street over here, Main Street over here, both very heavy traffic. And um, we've lost, as I said, we've lost about uh, two thirds of them, somewhere in the range of eight to 10 on the roads. We don't know about all of them. Uh, some, in some cases we found the body, in some cases they vanished or they were reported to be seen dead in the road. Um, in other cases, they did have a, uh, suffer from illnesses that were, were fatal. That is the, the most difficult part of doing this. Um, the, the emotional toll of losing them especially if it happens in certain ways, is it doesn't get easier. It's not something that you get used to. It's always painful. It always will be painful. Um, we will lose more yet. So it's just part of doing this that you just have to deal with. We had cats that had um, incurable illnesses. We have one right now that has cancer, a skin cancer actually on the tip of its nose. And that cat was taken in by one of my colleague volunteers and he's taking care of it in his home until it passes away. Um, we had one cat that had FIP, which is an infectious peritonitis. There's no cure for that disease. And it died very slowly over about one year um, until it finally um, actually went into a coma right here in the parking lot. And I had to take it in and have it euthanized. I mean, when I look at the cats, and, and especially the ones that have been adopted um, and the ones we have outside that are still healthy. It, it's very rewarding in that sense. But at the same time, there's the ones that disappear. There's the bodies that I've had to take out of the road that are just, you know, literally mangled, right? I mean, a happy cat that the day before was I was playing with and petting, and now I'm picking up its mangled body off the road and taking it to be cremated. And it, it, it's... Um, there's that side to it as well. And, and having to have them euthanize sometimes, that's the only thing left that you can do. And there's just nothing you can do to avoid it. It's, um, it's not all happy, you know, it's not all, it's not all sad, but it's not all happy either. Um, but um, it's one of those things in life where you cannot be perfectionist. You have to accept that there are limits to what you can accomplish, right? That however hard you try, whatever you do, some of them will get killed on the road anyway. Some of them will die of diseases anyway. And there's no way you can change that. That's just life. And, and so you, you have to not let that put you off helping the other ones, right? And just kind of giving up because, oh, it's too difficult and it's too painful. But then you're just giving up and you're not helping the other ones. So you, you do the best you can. But the best you can do is not perfect, right? It's much less than perfect on the road, I took it to a Tama vet just over the road and I, they do this, it's nice, they all write this on, so, you know, sorry for your loss of dandy. Yeah. The cremation is about $350, which includes the private cremation and the ashes returned in that little wooden box, the, uh, it's about, about 300 We had another one that um, the matriarch of all the original cats here that we ca we called her Mama, little black cat about this big, really nice little cat, and she all of the cats that were born here and didn't come in afterwards, they were all descended from her. So Mama, uh, we we called her Mama because she was actually the matriarch of of all of the original cats at Luna, going back to about 2012, 2013. At the peak here, we had about in the park before I really got on top of trapping them and, and stopping the, the breeding. We had about 14 to 15 at 14 or 15 at that time. And they had all descended from Mama. Panther reminds me of Mama because uh, he is jet black all over, short hair, the same as she was. Uh, 
His eyes are a different colour, if I remember Mama correctly. Um, but other than that, his stature, his size, he looks, he looks very similar to her. Um, of course, he's male, she was female. But other than that, if you stood them next to each other, they would look, they would be difficult to, to distinguish. Yeah, so from early on, from 2010 up to, it would have been about now 2019, uh, Mama lived at the southwest corner of uh, 600A ball. There's a plinth there with the, with the Lunar Terra Serena sign. It's facing southwards towards 700 Abel. And on that corner, she would wait for me there every night. And as I turned the corner from coming from the gym side, she would run across the parking lot to me. So she recognized me from 50 yards away. And I would feed her in that spot right there. Um, and then about four years ago, when her problem started, she disappeared. And I couldn't find her and then I was searching hard for her for the next week and then after five or six days she suddenly came out from under the bushes over there and she was dragging one leg so one leg looked like it was either badly injured or broken or something something badly wrong with it um, it was very difficult to trap her I wanted to take her to the vet I, I got my net and I netted her actually and just wrapped her in the net and then carried her in the net back to my unit here and I had her inside for a few weeks and then one morning I woke up and I went to find her. I couldn't find her. I found her eventually under the bed and she was just collapsed on under the bed with her head on the carpet and just looking and I thought, my God, she's died. It looked like she was dying or dead. And I poked her and moved her and she, she didn't respond. She was just inert. I took her to the vet and... Um, decided to leave her there with them overnight. The next morning they called me up and said that she was not able to stand up, that they tried to stand her up and she just fell over. And basically she'd had a huge blood clot um, in the back legs. The, the, the artery to the back legs is like a Y. It does, there's the main artery and then it splits to the two legs. And the clot tends to stick where, where the, at the junction of the Y and it paralyzes both legs when that happens. That's the biggest kind of blood clot, the most serious type. So she'd had smaller ones, and now she had the big one. It's excruciatingly painful, apparently, um, and there's no cure. Once they start having these clots, you, there's nothing you can do to stop it. They will just keep happening. So at that point, I had to um, make the decision to take her in and have her euthanized. And I called up Chong, who also feeds the cats in the morning, and she wanted to come with me, so we both went and... I had Mama in my lap, I was holding her like this in my lap to get her as comfortable as I could and um, I said okay to the vet, you can go ahead now and he gave her the shot to knock her out and then she went off to sleep and then after a few minutes he gave her the second one the second one stops the heart and that's when the cat passes away so I was holding her, she died and it was very emotional it was uh, very upsetting for, for Chong and for me as well We'd been feeding her for close to 10 years and we were very fond of her. And it was a very sad thing, but part of taking care of these cats is dealing with this as well. You have to sometimes deal with the, a, a very unpleasant side of things. And realistically, it's the last thing you can do for the cat. It's, it, instead of letting it just suffer and die, the last kindness you can give it is to, is to ease its suffering and, and help it on its way. So that's what we did, and that was that was um, that was Mama's passing. The first thing I'd like to to, to make clear: there are a few people that have spoken to me um, over the years, very few, maybe two or three, that have had some issue with the idea of feeding these community cats. Um, I believe they have the idea that the only reason the cat is here is because they're being fed and if you didn't feed them they would go away or just take themselves off somewhere, greener pastures, whatever. That's categorically not true. The way you deal with this problem is TNR. You get them sterilized and then you have a stable, pop, smaller stable population in the area that you're concerned with. It's a question of taking a situation that you can't live with 
and turning it into one that you can live with. Not necessarily that it's perfect, because perfect may mean that you don't have any, but that's not going to work, right? Would you rather have a few that are have no fleas, are healthy, um, and the population is stable and actually declining, or would you rather have the situation out of control and more and more and more riddled with fleas, dying of diseases? So I would ask people, please don't leave food out, um, don't feed them, but also absolutely don't leave food out. Now this is actually not illegal in Milpitas, I wish it were, it is in San Jose to, to leave food out in parks because it will attract nuisance animals, skunks, raccoons, opossums by far the worst being actually um, raccoons. If people want to feed the cats, what I would say is please work with me and my colleagues who do this. And if, if anyone would volunteer and say, hey, I will feed them one day a week, I would say, oh, thank you, that would be wonderful. The other thing people can do if they don't have the time to do it or just don't care to actually do it in person is to help financially. Um, I have a PayPal account. Right now I do this Monday to Friday, occasionally the weekends. Some days I've gone seven days straight without the break. Um, I have a full-time job. I have a cat of my own that I take care of, which I adopted from here. Um, I have other things that I need to do and it's very difficult to fit this in every day, um, especially in the winter when it's cold, of course, sometimes raining, it's a chore. So it is difficult, but I've gotten used to it over the years and I can't imagine not doing it at this point unless somebody else offered to take the whole thing over, which I think is unlikely.